Most people start with a 12 volt system for their camper. But is 12 volts really the best choice? In this video, I will show four reasons why you should use a 24 volt system and the possible disadvantages of using 24 volts as well. Let me take you behind my screen and explain. First, let's talk about inverters and cable sizes. What are big cables? In my opinion, anything over one gauge or 50 mm square, and when cables get bigger, so does the cost. Let's look at the cable cost of running a 3000 watt inverter on 12 volts. A 3000 watt inverter isn't actually pulling 3000 watts from the battery. Due to efficiency losses of the inverter, which is 90%, the inverter will draw 3300 33 watts from the battery at maximum load. At 12 volt, the current is 278 amps. Now we apply a 1.25 safety factor and we become 347 amps. This means you will need a 400 amp fuse and a 4 odd or 120 mm square welding cable. This cable will cost you $90 for 5 feet black and 5 feet red. What if we use 24 volts instead? At 24 volts, the same load pulls half the current, 139 amps. After applying the 1.25 safety factor, we get 173 amps. And now you would need a 200 amp fuse and a 2 gauge or 35 mm square welding cable which will cost you $37 for the same length. That's a difference of $53 and a cable that is much more flexible. You will also save on the charge controller to a battery cable because the current will be halved, which I will talk about next. If you have 1000 watts of solar panels on a 12 volt system, the current will be 78 amps. So, you will need a charge controller like the Victron 15085, which will cost you $453. If you upgrade to 24 volts, the current is cut in half. We only have 39 amps. You would need a 40 amp MVPT, like the Victron 15045, which will cost you $218. Here are the most significant savings, $235 just by switching to 24 volts. If you charge your battery from AC power, like a generator or shore power, you would also need a charger. For 12 volt systems, you might use a 40 amp charger, which outputs 480 watts. This charger will cost you $219. And for a 24 volt system, you would only need a 20 amp charger to get the same power output of 480 watts. And it will cost you $180. That's a saving of $39. It's not a huge difference, but still cheaper. When I looked, it was in discount, costing you $140, thus saving you a total of $79. At the time, of making this video. There's another big problem with 12 volt systems that most people overlook. Power loss due to resistance. I recently made a video where I showed a circuit that lost 32 watts as heat, just because the voltage was low and the current was high. That's wasted energy that could have been used to power your appliances. Let's take a closer look at the theory behind this. Power loss in a wire is given by the following formula. Power equals current squared times resistance. So the more current you draw, the more power you lose as heat. So how do we decrease the current while still running the same appliances? We must increase the battery voltage, because that will decrease the current. Let's apply this knowledge to a practical example. 
we already calculated that a 3000 watt inverter at 12 volts draws 277 amps at max load. A megafuse has an internal resistance of 0 0.0005 ohms. Let's see how much power it dissipates as heat, when our maximum current flows through it. Let's apply the previous formula. 227 amps squared times 0.00055 equals 28 watts. That's 28 watts of wasted energy as heat, just in one single fuse. If we switch to 24 volts, the current is cut in half. We only have a current of 139 amps. If we use the same formula again, we get a lower power loss of only 11 watts. That's more than half the power loss, just by increasing the system's voltage. So a higher voltage equals less wasted power, more usable energy from your batteries. Let's move on to the second part of the video, where I discuss the drawbacks of using a 24 volt system. While 24 volts is the better choice in most cases, it isn't perfect. Here are a few downsides to consider. I will give you three reasons. Let's take a look at battery sizes, because I know there is some confusion around it. A quick recap about voltage, amp hours and watt hours. A 12 volt 200 amp hour battery has the same energy as a 24 volt 100 amp hour battery. Both store 2400 watt hours. However, as we have previously seen, a 3000 watt inverter on a 12 volt system draws 277 amps. You will need a battery that can deliver 300 amps. These are three 12 volt 100 amp hour batteries in parallel, if each battery has a 100 amp BMS. If you have a 3000 watt inverter working on 24 volts, we have a current of 139 amps. So we will need two 24 volts 100 amp hour batteries in parallel with a 100 amp BMS each. Can you see the issue here? The price for three 12 volt 100 amp hour batteries is $600. And the price for two 24 volt 100 amp hour batteries is $840. The two 24 100 amp hour batteries will have more capacity, but there's an alternative. You can also have two 12 volt 100 amp hour batteries in series. Now, this isn't my usual recommendation. I even made a video about why you should not wire batteries in series. But it's cheaper this way. Each battery can deliver a maximum current of 100 amps. With two in series, we get a maximum of 200 amps, which is under the max current of 139 amps. Although you would need a balancer, the cost of these two 12 volt 100 amp hour batteries would be $400, and the cost of a balancer from Victron is $50. So in this case, I recommend using the two 12 volt batteries in series with the balancer, and it will cost you. $450 in total. A saving of $450 compared to the three batteries in parallel. The first drawback of 24 volt systems is that 12 volt batteries are far more common, making them cheaper and easier to find. With more brands and competition, 12 volt batteries offer better pricing and availability, while 24 volt batteries are less common and more expensive. Enjoying the video so far? I would appreciate it if you would give it a like. If you have 12 volt appliances, like LED lights, RV water pumps or a fan, you will need 24 volt to 12 volt DC converters. The pricing of these depends on the output power rating. Be careful when selecting one. A step down converter converts the voltage from 24 volts to 12 volts, and a boost converter steps up the voltage from 12 volts to 24 volts. This one is rated 
for 24 volt to 12 volt at 30 amps. So the power of this device is 360 watts. It will cost you $22. A small extra cost, but worth considering. These are usually 90% efficient. Now you might think, can I just not connect the 12V appliances to my 12V battery in series? The answer is no, because you will create imbalances in your battery, and the balancer will have to work extra hard, potentially not being able to pick up. After the third and last downside, I will tell you why I don't recommend using 48V systems for an RV. For a charge controller to charge your battery, the solar panel input voltage must be at least 5 volts higher than the battery voltage. A single 12V solar panel has a VMP of 18.7 volts. This would be enough to charge a 12V battery. But on a 24V system, a single panel will not charge a 24V battery. If you add two panels in series, the voltage will increase to 37.4 volts, and that is enough to charge a 24 volt battery. You might ask, why not just use 48 volt instead? For homes and large off-grid systems, 48 volt is great, but for a camper van or RV, it has some downsides. Most vehicles have 12 volt alternators. Charging 24 volts from 12 volts is easy with a DC to DC charger. But 12 volts to 48 volts DC to DC chargers are expensive or low power. Take this Sterling for example. $877 for 800 watts of charging power. That's $1.1 per watt. Here are some common DC to DC chargers and their price per watt. We can see that Victron is quite pricey for 48 volts and 24 volt battery banks. Even the new Orion XS 12 to 12 volts is quite expensive per watt. The Renogy DC to DC chargers are more affordable, but are only available in 12 volt versions. So if you mainly want to charge from the alternator, I recommend sticking with a 12 volt system. Remember that you will burn more fuel when charging the battery with these chargers. By now you've seen the advantages of a 24 volt system. Smaller cables, lower cost and better efficiency. If you're running an inverter larger than 2000 watts or more than 400 watts of solar, 24 volts is a smarter choice. That said, 12 volt still makes sense if you need a charge from an alternator or if your system is small. Before upgrading, consider battery availability and the need for a DC to DC charger. Every setup is different, but in most cases, 24 volts will save you money and improve performance in the long run. Do you have anything to add to this list? Please let me know in the comments. I'll post a link in the description to my free electrical diagrams for vans and RVs. If you're a beginner and want to watch more of my videos, check this playlist. Thank you for watching and I will see you in the next one.